Hello, my name is Kathy, and today I'll be teaching the Irish uh, jig Gary Owen from the Irish Dance Tunes for All Harps book by Sylvia Woods. But before I do, I wanted to tell you that I have a great many videos now on many different topics, and so I've decided to make several different video playlists so that it's easy to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. Please refer to my two introductions to the Irish dance tunes for more information on these dance tunes. Now, Gary Owen is an old Irish quick step that can be traced back to the early 1860s. The regimental song Gary Owen came informally into the army between 1861 and 1866 as a quick step, but its use was first documented in 1867 when Gary Owen was adopted by the 7th U.S. Cavalry Regiment as the official air or tune uh, of the regiment and the historical nickname given to the 7th Cavalry Regiment and Troopers. As it is generally portrayed, George Armstrong Custer did not himself bring the, the song to the regiment, but Brevet Lieutenant Colonel Captain Miles W. Keogh and several other officers with ties to the 5th Royal Irish Lancers and the Papal Guard two Irish regiments in the British Army were believed to be instrumental in bringing the air to the regiment. The geographical area that provided the inspiration with the name of one of the most popular rollicking folk songs of Ireland is situated on the upward slope of the hill in Limerick County near the city of Limerick. Local traditions and folklore have preserved the historical significance of the area and the origin of its name, Gary Owen, a compounded word composed of two Irish words, which means Garden of Owen. The terrain features of Gary Owen gave the royal patrons of the garden a broad, commanding view of the richly cultivated surrounding countryside. The old town of Limerick and the valley of Shannon River, which gently washes the battered fortified towers of King John's Castle, which was constructed in the late 1180s to control traffic along the river. The cottage of Owen and surrounding plot of ground soon became a favorite holiday resort with the nearby citizens of Limerick because the atmosphere and accommodations were somewhat similar to those offered to the London mechanic by the Battersea Tea Gardens. A review of Irish literature reveals that Owen's Garden was a general rendezvous for those who sought simple pleasure and amusement. The elderly drank together under the shade of the trees and the young played at ball, goal or other athletic activities on the green, while a few lingered in the nearby hedgerows with their fair acquaintances. Owen's Garden was soon to become as famous for scenes of strife as it was for mirth and humor, and broken arms, legs, and heads became a staple article of manufacture in the neighborhood. These new diversions were encouraged by a number of young people having a greater supply of animal spirits than wisdom to control themselves. The young gentlemen found fond, fond of wit amused themselves by having parties at night, to wringing the heads off the geese and tearing knockers off the doors in the neighborhood. They sometimes suffered their genius to soar as high as the breaking of a street lamp and even resorting to the physical violence of a watchman. But this type of joking was found a little too serious to be repeated very frequently. For a few achievements or so daring a, vi a violence were documented in the records. They were obliged to contend themselves with less ambitious distinction of destroying the door knockers and store locks, annoying the peace of the neighborhood with long continued assaults, assaults on the front doors, terrifying the quite on, quiet onlookers with every species of insult and provocation, and indulging their fratricral frat, frat, pro, propensities against all the geese and Gary Owen. The fame of the Gary Owen boys soon spread far and wide. Their deeds were celebrated by some inglorious minstrel of the day in that melody which has since resounded over the world, and even symbolically uh, competed for natural, national popularity with St. Patrick's Day. 
a string of verses were appended to the tune which soon enjoyed equal notoriety. The name of Gary Owen was as well known as that of the city of Limerick itself, and Owen's Garden became almost a synonym for Ireland. Gary Owen is known to have been used by Irish regiments as a drinking song. As the story goes, one of the Irish melting pot troops of the 7th Calvary, under the influence of spirits, was singing the song. By chance, Custer heard the melody, liked the cadence, and soon began to hum the tune himself. The tune has a lively beat that accents the cadence of marching horses, and for that reason was adopted as the regimental song soon after Custer arrived at Fort Riley, Kansas, to take over command of the 7th Cavalry Regiment. It was the last song played for Custer's men as they left General Terry's column at the Powder River and rode into history. Gary Owen has become undoubtedly the most famous of all the regimental marches in the Army. It became the official song of the 1st Cavalry Division in 1981 during the first team ceremonies at Cooper Field. Fort Hood, the song is not sung, however. It is customary for the song to be played at the conclusion of the ceremonial activities and the guests stand and clap. Now I'll play this piece slowly without the repeats first so that you can see how everything fits in together and then I'll play it at its proper speed with all with all of the repeats. Hello! When learning this piece of music, clap and count out the right hand and the left hand and then learn it hands separately and then put it hands together. Gary Owen is written in the key of G major, so remember to engage all the F sharping levers before you begin. When playing this jig, make sure that the right hand melody is louder overall than the left hand accompaniment and make sure that the grace notes in the right hand are not played louder than the melody notes. A jig is a tune in 6-8 time, most easily counted out like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. When counting your way through, try not to give the 4 beat too much emphasis. If you do, the 6 beat measure breaks into a pair of 3 beat phrases, making the tune sound choppy. Jigs can be played comfortably as slow as a dotted quarter note at uh, metronome marking 100 to about a dotted quarter note 120. In music, it's, gen it's a general rule of thumb that when the notes of the melody, in this case the right hand notes, rise in pitch from lower notes to higher notes that the volume will increase. And when the melody notes fall in pitch, uh, the volume will decrease. In general, the left hand of most songs will be the spot where the beat of the song manifests most strongly. In general, the first note of each bar of music in the left hand is slightly emphasized to give a good strong beat and the lower notes are emphasized slightly, and what this does is it causes the playing of the piece of music to have greater depth and contrast. At the conclusion of the piece, do not put in a retardando or a slight slowing down. Dance tunes were meant to be played in session with one following the other without pause. Remember that this is a song that is written for dancers to dance to, so the rhythm of the piece needs to remain constant throughout. In Gary Owen, there are a series of uh, grace notes, and I just wanted to demonstrate how those fit in. The first one occurs on the third line of music, near uh, the third bar, third line, third bar. And I'll just play... So it comes in just before I'll do it again. And a little faster. And a little faster. And that's how the grace notes work. Now, in Gary Owen, there are broken three note chords in the octave, three note chords in the left hand. Uh, starting at the very beginning, and I just want to show how that fits in. The bottom note of that three note broken chord fits in with the right hand note. Hear that? And I'll go a little faster. A little faster. 
hear how that works? Great. And I'm going to play Gary Owen now at a very slow pace without any repeats so that you can see how everything fits in. videos now on many different topics and so I've decided to make several different video playlists so that it's easy to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. Well that's it for now. To stay up to date with my latest videos make sure to subscribe to this free YouTube channel by clicking the red subscribe button right below this video. Take care! <music>